Today on Fantasy V, Ireland versus Mothers, because of course it's St. Patrick's Day and Mother's Day. This is the podcast where we, the noise next door, create five-a-side football teams using characters from fiction, history and real life. Then we see these teams battle it out on the pitch to see who will be crowned victorious. I'm Matt and I'm joined by Robin and we are this week's pundits. It's our job to provide criticism and insight into the manager's lineups and later we'll be in charge of the highlights from today's fixture. Today our managers are Sam and Tom. First up, Sam, what's your team? Matthew, today I will be honouring my Irish heritage for I am 132nd Irish <laughs> at, wait. Hang on. Matt, you're half Irish. I'm half Irish. Yeah, your your surname Pacelli uh, su- suggests it's not a major part of you. My parents took off the O. O Pacelli, yeah. it used to be. Pacelli O. Um, yeah. That sounds even more Italian, actually. It? It's like double Italian. But yes, I have Ireland and I'm delighted. Fantastic. And Tom? Uh, I am team mothers because I am actually half mother uh, based on my parents. G- genetically speaking, you're half mother. Yeah. Hi. I, everyone is. That's fun, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's good. Okay, well, a lot of people are going to be associating with your team there, Tom. Tom is more mother than Sam is Irish. That's mad, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Before we start things off, please head to iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast, and rate and review Fantasy Five with a lovely five stars, please. Now, without further ado, let's hear those Fantasy Fives. First up, Sam. Who's your team? Well, I'm starting today um, with the Shamrocks in midfield. I think I've got a really, a really strong midfield. I think I'm going to actually rotate quite a lot. Um, Two words for you, Pep Guardiola. I'm going to, I'm going to (laughs) keep that rotation moving around depending on who I'm playing (laughs) against. Uh, But I think maybe the core of the midfield is going to be the man, the legend. It's Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. (laughs) Ah, Liam Neeson. I think he's going to be a really solid. Uh, midfield addition, the 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 rock in midfield. Why? We know he's a menace, a phantom menace, guys. <laughs> and who is harder to mark than a phantom? A ghoul, maybe a Razal ghoul. That's right. right. He's Batman's nemesis. He's he's the ne- he's the nemesis of all of all dark Jedi. Also, um, we know he's got genius level intellect from both of these characters. Both of these characters are also genius tacticians, skilled martial artists. Um, which is helpful for kicking. Sure, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Martial arts, good for kicking. Football, good for kicking. Good crossover. Uh, of course, as Ra's al Ghul, he is also a really good trainer and teacher to Batman. Um, and I think training and teaching, it's, it's, you know, he's going to have a good, a good coaching role within that midfield and he's going to really improve people around him. A hundred percent. And also he's got a other, other sort of former for that in, in Love Actually. He's a wonderful stepfather. So just in terms of nurturing younger talent, I can see him doing really, really well in that, in that role. Although I do question the uh, the slight relevance if he's taught Batman, does he has he taught anyone who isn't part of a, like a bat sport, maybe like a foot base sport? <laughs> sure, I mean he's good at teaching cricket and, and whatnot. But... I see what you're saying. Um, I'm not worried about it. Bats have also got feet. Good point. That's a good point. They, are they feet or claws? I, I don't know. I mean, claws are on the feet. Claws mate. on your feet, mate. Do you? Oh, yeah. Well, they're not like you. You don't have any. You don't have any arms or legs. You just have toenails on your torso. <laughs> Okay, well, fair enough, Sam. You've justified it well. Continue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's got. There's, there's more. There's more to him. Oh, I mean, yeah. we know what what skills does he have? He has a very particular set of skills. <laughs> skills have acquired over a long career. Skills that make him a nightmare for people like defenders. If you, and the other thing, if you if you take things from him, <laughs> he will look for you. He will find you, and he will kill you. So I'm a little bit worried about a red card. If I'm honest, sure. But, yeah. I really like it. I, I, you need that tenacity in a midfield position. If you're robbed of the ball, you need to hound people to get it back. And so that that tenacity to make sure that he will find you and kill you, really important to me. Yeah, I would. It's, you're absolutely right. Jury, I mean, listen, the first time he gets taken, taken one is going to be a hell of a ride. Taken two, oh, that second tackle is going to be amazing as well. Taken three might lose some of its previous momentum. And who knows about the fourth taken? Who knows? It, but the tackles are going <laughs> to hopefully get better from there. Yeah, I mean, it'll probably come, won't it? <laughs> Uh, yeah I mean he's a Jedi he's a man in black Mm. he's an assassin he's a spy he's a monster and most importantly he's a Lego cop He's 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 got so many facets. Does, does this mean that Liam Neeson can detach part of his body? Is he an actual? Is he Lego? Is that what we're saying? He's made of Lego. That's how good at acting. I'm he happy is. with it. I'm just checking. It's within his range. Yeah. yeah, he can take off his little Lego hands and give them to the goalkeeper if uh, they need any more. Perfect. That's true. Hands. Yeah. Or the or or he can hold his own legs. Like, how do you kick a ball harder? You hold your leg in your hand and you hit it. <laughs> 
Swinging it like a bat leg. With a bat. With a bat. Perfect. Unbelievable. Mm. It's all falling into place. Yeah, you can't like pull both legs off. You, you can only pull both legs off a Lego man, can't you? You can't do individual legs. So he no. is going to be stumped and on the floor. But like you said, if he's swinging his legs like a bat, it, it doesn't matter. That's just a good grounding, I'd say, to get a real whack on it. I like it. Beautiful. So everyone's happy with Liam Neeson. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it too. That's for, yeah, I mean, hey, Liam Neeson's a great shout. And good dulcet tones as well, you know. Just just ima- imagine him giving a little team talk. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're going to stop yeah. and listen. To be honest, all the team talks from all of the people, and anyone who talks during a team talk in this team is going to sound great. We know that the Irish accent's boss. <laughs> uh, actually, speak, speaking of an Irish accent, this guy, this guy next to him in midfield, he's a little bit more difficult to understand. Okay. It's Conor McGregor. Oh. <laughs> Now, for those of you who don't know, (laughs) Conor McGregor is a multi-time ultimate fighting champion, multi-time MMA champion, that's mixed martial arts, 22 wins, 19 by knockout. This guy is a knockout artist. Uh, Now, he's he's a controversial figure. This is why a lot of people might know him. Uh, He's a kind of love or hate guy. In fact, he's a love to hate kind of guy yeah, he's gotcha. an absolute trash talker like this guy is going to be is going to be in your ear non-stop with complete verbal abuse if you haven't seen any of his trash talking just youtube it, it is absolutely hilarious um he's got so much <laughs> swagger and pomp about him as well you know he he like walks around he leads with his crotch and his shoulders just kind of like <laughs> f- follow you can't see it but i'm really doing the action it's really it's really fun to do yeah no, is, is that good in football or do you want to lead with your crotch in football <laughs> well not necessarily whilst you're playing but it's intimidating he's in he's yeah. an intimidating yeah. player you know you, you see that guy walking down the tunnel and you're like oh god also he's got no top on so he's just he's just shredded his swagger is absolutely legendary like just recently i saw on social media that he spent like two million dollars on a watch and every time it becomes a new hour a little window opens in the watch and it's just two people banging it's always the same picture of two people banging yeah honestly (laughs) it's like and every hour he just looks at this it's not him it's not him it's just two random people banging in his watch and it was two million dollars honestly look it up it's a hell of a watch are these like you know like sistine chapel beautiful painting uh, banging people or are they like cut out of the sun and just stuck in (laughs) the watch it's it's, yeah it's it's like it's like beautiful painting (laughs) It's not like sort okay. of a sort of postcard you'd find in Marbella, you know. Like it's yeah, yeah. Uh, it's That's cl- yeah. classy banging. Okay, fair. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's things like this that have made him a cult figure. Like, and you you might think, how the hell's he got enough money to spend two million on a watch? He is the biggest pay per view draw in MMA history. Uh, his only boxing match. He's had one boxing match with Floyd Mayweather. It is the second. Uh, biggest pay-per-view, boxing pay-per-view in boxing history, even wow. though he's not a boxer. So he's drawing in massive crowds, massive amounts of money, huge merchandise sales. Mm. Uh, and I think that's important. But on the pitch itself, he, he because he's mixed martial arts, he knows a, a whole load of mixed martial arts. And I think all of those blended together are going to make him formidable in the middle of the park. Uh, so he's a, he's a incredible at capoeira, so he can dodge and nimbly avoid tackles. Uh, obviously, his his, he's, he's very good at boxing, so his footwork and his balance, very important. He's dangerous on the left, i.e. he's got a great left hook. Um, phenomenal on the counter as well. He's, a re- <laughs> he's really good on the counter attack um, and defensively as well. Taekwondo brings him a whole range of kicks. He's got his hook kick, his spinning heel kick, his back kick, his side kick. That's a lot of kicks. And as we have previously mentioned, football, you need to be able to kick, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Just a question in, t- in, in case there's ever any training ground bust-ups. Who would win in a fight out of Liam Neeson the Jedi Lego uh, Taken guy and actual Conor McGregor. I, I think Liam Neeson would have it because Conor McGregor, well, listen, he's, he's cool, but he's not a Jedi. Uh, t- he would be talking up a big game and he will be making sure that you pay to see that fight. <laughs> that's the main and thing. That's important. From a management point of view, the chairman's <laughs> going to be thrilled about that. The chairman's going to be mm. absolutely thrilled. Yeah, I think Conor McGregor is the kind of guy who's like, oh, I live on television will punch a lightsaber. Except with an Irish accent, one assumes. Except it'll be uh, more like that, Matthew. <laughs> oh, you know I'm going to camp you. I'm going to camp you and I'm going to knock you to the floor. Like that. I'll punch your laser stick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. He sounds like a charming chap and uh, I'm very happy that he's best friends with Liam. <laughs> He'll probably just tell you to shut up, actually. He, he, he really just, like, somebody's like, um, oh, you know, wait, give me a diss, Matt, and, I'll, and I'll, give me a little diss and I'll do a, what Conor Gregor would do in response. Oi. Connor, you sound like you've got the surname of Ewan McGregor. All right, great. Good one, your mum's tit. Now let's move on to why I'm so... <laughs> that's the kind of level that we're talking about. He says, oh, good one to people all the time, and I love that. So that's Connor. Sounds like a lovely chap. Who you got next? <laughs> well, as I said, I, uh, a little bit of rotation in midfield, uh, and I think this person could potentially start, actually, because of the opposition that I'm facing. I'm facing mothers. So I've picked my own Irish mother. That's right. She is eligible to play for both teams. 
Ooh. It's Ireland's fearless pirate queen. It's Gronje O'Malley. Now, people mm. might not have heard about Gronje before, but she was an absolute boss of the seas. She dominated the sea. And that's a massive area to dominate, which is why she's good in midfield. She can cut <laughs> the whole pitch easily and quickly. Um, I like her because, as I said about Liam Neeson, you know, being robbed of the ball and immediately trying to get it back. She's the same. She's got a real penchant for vengeance. If you smite her, her thing was to, like, get you back tenfold. Like, um, a family member killed one of her family members. So what does she do? She wipes out their entire family. This is the kind of, this is the kind of uh, determination and, <laughs> and pure wrath that you want in, in the midfield. She's a leader of fighting men as well. She's a woman who is in charge of a ton of men. So she's going to slot into this uh, team of other dudes pretty easily. She's also, she's also the ultimate working mother. My favourite story about her is that uh, <laughs> she gave birth... And within the hour, won a battle on the seas against the English from her ship. How <laughs> awesome is that? It's pretty cool. But listen, I'm not 100% convinced I support it as a mothering tactic. Like, like I feel like this is why she would be better suited to the island team than the mother's team, because the mothers are going to be judging her for that. Like, just going out with a baby swinging off the nip. Well, that's mothers terrible. Mothers judge other mothers, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> for their for their parenting tech, everyone parents a little bit differently. Maybe she's got the baby at the teat as she is commanding. Yeah, and maybe that puts the fear into the into the opposition. I like that. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. And she could sort of like use the use the other nipple as sort of like a blinding spray if she really needed to, sort of just straight into the uh, straight into the mm. enemy's eyes. It's a good tactic. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Uh, are you concerned at all about if you uh, if this team wins, you know, the championship, you get the trophy? Are you worried that she's going to go and bury it somewhere? <laughs> Because she's a pirate. Uh, oh, I see. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, uh, it took me a while. Thing, I was like, do? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, do mums <laughs> bury, bury stuff? <laughs> <laughs> no, because a pirate. Because a pirate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she can go. She can bury her treasure. I'm. I'm. I'm all right with that. I mean, I don't know if you'd call the aftermath of giving birth an injury, but playing through injury, <laughs> playing through this kind of level of pain. Oh, yeah. It really. Oh, it really conjures up images of, of Terry Butcher or Paul Lintz playing with like um, bandages wrapped around their bloody head. Like, I mean, she's going to have bandages wrapped about, wrapped around a very different area. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is that a thing? But certainly like a, ba a bang on the head or a woman giving birth, obviously the same level of pain. And uh, so I don't see why that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> yeah. So she's my, she's my other option. And of course, uh, against, uh, against the mothers, I think she's going to have some tactic. Maybe she's transferred in from them. Oh, maybe she's mm. going to, yeah, yeah. I, I'm interested in it. I'm interested in having her there for her for her knowledge of the opposition. Very nice, and you're sparking drama. Okay, so that's your whole middle middle field that they can swivel around, that's which I'm now yeah, realising means options. take it in turns rather yes. than they can turn on the spot. <laughs> yes, that's yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, who else do you have? Then? Okay, we're going to go uh, into into defence now. I've dipped into the world of Irish folklore for defence, and it has been a fun 17 hours of my life. Let me tell you. <laughs> in defence, we have <laughs> Bala. Now, Bala is the personification of the scorching sun. He is a giant and he is the leader of a group called the Fomorians, who are a group of malevolent supernatural beings. So not only is he a malevolent supernatural being, he is the leader of a group of supernatural malevolent beings. He's their, he's their full, on, uh, full on champion. Uh, he's very, very powerful. He has, his main thing is that he has um, a giant eye that is so powerful. Imagine Sauron with the eye in Lord of the Rings, yeah. but it's, that eye is on a body, like a giant yeah. body. And when this eye opens, it wreaks destruction. This is a quote. It can unleash balefire, the power of poison, a petrifying beam. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Good luck getting past him. So he's my kind of sentinel at the back, just completely destroying all stuff in front of him. Presumably he can he can remain relatively physically, relatively s still. If he can shoot a he beam across the pitch, he's not going to have to sort of be that, that mobile. Presumably if mm -hmm. he's a giant, he is mobile, but he's not going to need... Really, that, I mean, feels like that's all you need. You can, Liam Neeson, it Conor McGregor and Gronje can have a sit down. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, they don't have to defend too much. He, he just destroy you with his beam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fair enough, yeah. 
uh, as we you know often come across in these uh, fantasy fives uh I, we sort of find that a few murders kind of you get through before you start getting red cards <laughs> yeah yeah and it's a defensive murder as well so technically it's <laughs> victimless crime isn't it yeah, yeah 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 but you can you can defend that in court you can say you know it was self-defense they were coming into no, my no. area of a uh, <laughs> yeah 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 you can do yeah. some murdering i'm i'm in i'm into yeah, it good luck to a bunch of mums trying to get past old fire eye at the back <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that maybe some merchandise options just having a you know just a big eye just buying a big eye and stick like you know you stick it to your face yeah yeah, yeah. so we're taking the, the eye is right in the middle like i'm, I'm imagining cyclops is it bigger than cyclops, that? is it is like his whole face and eye it's disputed so there's different there's oh. different um different versions some it's just one eye uh some it's a third eye you know a giant one uh some people it's an eye on the top of his head uh, okay, yeah. less useful. I, less it's, useful. It's all over the place. <laughs> what is definitely agreed upon is that it's a very, very powerful eye. Scary laser beam eye. Oh, cool. Mm. If the eye was on top of the head, that is going to make heading really difficult. Like you know, it hurts a little bit if you get a bit of the ball's just going to be destroyed immediately. Yeah, yeah. The ball's going to get either the ball's going to get destroyed or he's going to he's going to have a poorly eye for a while. He needs some eye drops. I like the fact you talk about poorly eye actually, because there is a um, one of the one of the tales is that he he does get injured in the eye, but what happens is that it bleeds. Uh, so much that it creates a lake that is in current current island. The lakes of Ireland are, are created from the blood. He doesn't die or anything. It's just, oh, you know, he's just got a little nick in the eye, but he's a giant and he's so powerful that all the blood that comes out creates a lake. That's really wow, cool. bit of a crier then, but that's quite beneficial in uh, football when they get uh, tackled and fall down and really want to sell it. This guy's going to be crying all yeah. over the place. They're like, oh, it must have been real. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. So that's Bala. Yeah, he's my defender. Uh, and then still from the world of uh, Irish folklore, I'm going to go with my goalkeeper. Now my goalkeeper is a creature called the Pooka, <laughs> which is a which is a, which is a great name. It does sound like an Irish person saying poker or just or a poo car, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now the Pooka is one of the most feared fairies uh, in Irish folklore. Not it's not like a little tiny fairy. Tinkerbell fairy. No, the poo fairy. <laughs> the poo fairy. <laughs> That's, it. That's, it. That's enough. Done. I've got a poo fairy goal. Let's move yeah. on. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah. But yes, the puka is is a um, is a harbinger of both good and bad fortune. Good for good for me, bad fortune for the opposition. Um, now the puka is a shapeshifter or a shape changer, so they can they can take the shape of any animal, and I think that's going to be really really handy in goal. Um, could you know as a base form could just be a, a gorilla hanging off the post. We've had gorillas in goal before. Mm. We've had a snake in goal before. We've had spiders. <laughs> we've had octopuses. We know that animals do very well in goal, and uh, the puka could be any animal. Um, if there's a corner coming in, you know needs to jump up to nut it away. Kangaroo, bang. If uh, if it's a penalty, bang. He's a whale filling up the whole goal. It could be anything. At a, mm. Spider, web the goal up. Scorpion, just sting some. Anything at all. Um, <laughs> the the, the puka can become that that animal. We, in fact, we've even talked about becoming a germ and and giving somebody you know a disease. He can he can do that as well. Yeah, the um, puka is the mad madam mim of the uh, Irish folklore <laughs> yeah. world. I guess. Yeah. Y yes, actually, there's 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 a there's a lot of similar similarities because also so there's a really fun thing where um uh the puka will try and trick you into stuff so as a horse it will try and trick people to oh, come and have a ride on me as a horse and then it will ride you directly into your own nightmares Love it. <laughs> interesting so if it's going to ride me into my own nightmares uh, conversely i will also be seeing my mother so that's great that's another link between there the you go. between the two teams uh, yeah when i've just i've just looked up the poo because i've not heard of him and uh, one thing that came up was <laughs> that on the first of november sometimes it said to go around to agriculture sort of like to crops and to a things like that and just do like defecate and vomit in them so first of all yeah. that's gonna ruin the buffet and second of all i love the idea that either this was a puka or at some point a man in ireland just went around crapping in his uh sort of enemy's crops and i love it i think that's the, the most petty of petty probably connor mate <laughs> well there you go that's put in the poo in puka i suppose <laughs> um yes and as um when the puka is on your side uh it can be a protective entity as well, which I like. So you, you need that uh, protective presence at the back. You need to reassure your defenders. Um, so ma malevolent against the opposition, protective for uh, for your own side. That's why I've got the puka in goal. Beautiful. Yeah, particularly useful in goal. Protection is the number one number one role of a goalkeeper. I love it. So this brings me to our striker. There's, there's mm. not much that needs to be said about him, really. I've got two words for you. Robbie Keane, Ireland's... 
<laughs> Number one cap winner, 116 caps, 63 goals. He is Ireland's top scorer. Let me put that into perspective. What? Wayne Rooney, only 53 goals for England. Robbie Keane, 63 goals for Ireland. He is a talisman. Okay. He is a legend and he is the captain for 10 years. We'll move on to my bench. <laughs> I'm, I... Uh... I I have to I have to step in and say it's this disgusting. is outrageous. You can't just pick an international footballer. This is fantasy five, not let's play football. All right, have you seen Robbie Keane play alongside Conor McGregor, <laughs> Liam Neeson, a Puka and the Baller before? Have you? No, but I right, have listen. seen him play football. To give, to give Sam the benefit of the doubt, the idea of this podcast, we take uh, people from all these different worlds, and you have to tenuously find ways to highlight their football skills. Can you do it with a real professional footballer? <laughs> 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 oh yeah, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be allowed if the only reasons that you give for him being good at football are everything to do with nothing to do with football. So if it's like if he's got a lot of charity work, then it's legit. But otherwise, this is this is nonsense. Yeah, he's got loads of charity work, mate. And most <laughs> importantly, as well, like, most importantly, he moved over to America, and it, and MLS was nothing until Robbie Keane got there. Bang! Now it's a a, a multi-billion-dollar company. He moved over to India as well. Played over in India and now Indian League is big in Asia. Uh, is she, I, listen, listen he's, he's up front. As the referee for this episode of Fantasy Five, I'm sorry to tell you, Sam, that he's not up front. I <sighs> think you opened with all of Robbie Keane's. So this is the first, the first rejection we've had in the the refereeing of Fantasy Five. But you opened with all of Robbie Keane's football statistics. I want to hear about his. I want to hear about his charitable con- charitable contributions. I want to hear about his head and shoulders adverts. That would be a, a valid reason to be on our Fantasy Five teams, but unfortunately, the fact that he's good at football... And has a lot of air miles. Yeah, directly <laughs> removes him from the team. I mean, you've, got, you've already got three in the middle. You did say that Gronio, Gronio Mali is, uh, is going to be floating around. Has she got any attacking options, do you think, instead? No. Uh, I'm happy well, to allow Robbie Keane as a backroom member of staff, but on the pitch, I'm afraid, this is an amateur league and Robbie Keane as a professional does not, is not eligible for selection. Yeah, okay. That, that makes sense to me. Um, fine. All right. Well, I've got fine. I thought this might happen. To be so, I've got, <laughs> so I've got what was supposed to be just a little two words for you, Robbie Keane. We'll move on. It really, it really escalated. Um, but okay, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a, a sub, uh, a yeah. sub striker there. Well, and now he's on the, he's on the yeah, field. I've got the Dullahan. Oh. Um, you might not have heard of the name, the Dullahan. However, you will have heard of the Headless Horseman. Oh. All Headless Horseman myth come from the Dullahan. Why is he good? He's rapid. He's on a horse. Um, the myth is that if he stops, you die. <laughs> and you chose Robbie Keane above this. You chose Robbie Keane above yeah. a man who, when you stop, you Robbie die. Robbie Keane scored more goals than the Dullahan, <laughs> so I had to go for it. But... Yeah, if if he if he stops the horse in front of someone, they die. That's just that's just known. Um, wow. Granted, he does hold his head in his hands, right. so he's not good in the air. Or is he? Because he can just throw his head at the ball. It's more accurate. <laughs> I've got Liam Neeson hitting the ball with his legs, being held in his hands, and I've got the headless horseman holding his head, throwing it at the ball, <laughs> heading it into yeah. the goal. Um, he's, he's very, very good at, in nighttime games. He can see the entire countryside, uh, even when in the dark. Really good vision. Uh, oh, also, he's got a whip. Have a guess <laughs> as to what his whip is made of. Oh, God, is it made of... Oh, I'm going to guess a spine. Is it made Bones? of a spine or... But what specifically? Yes, is it's it? the spine of a human corpse. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my God. Terrifying. This is so much better than Robbie Keane. What the <laughs> hell were you thinking? We got a lot of love for this. This is yeah, good. This is, this is good. His horse is an accessory. His head could be. Um, it's great. I do need to tell you about my uh, my backroom staff. We haven't really done mm. much about backroom staff on Fantasy Five, but I think here it's very very important because I've got a very strong backroom staff that are going to aid me, the manager, but my coaches. Number one, I've got Oscar Wilde incredibly smart speaks four languages probably not going to need them all because everyone's <laughs> irish um but he he was a key figure in the aestheticism movement which is all about beauty first and foremost so we're going to be playing with a with a fluidity and a beauty he's like pep and clop rolled into one uh, but he's also got loads of sound bites very Mourinho-esque. i'm going to give you some of his quotes that are going to rally my players these are things directly said by him or in his works oscar wilde number one be afraid of nothing Yes, that's what you want in your team talks. Um, we have nothing to declare except our genius. He's instilling belief. 
He's instilling a lack of fear in people. This is exactly what you want. It's, oh, it's gold. It's beautiful. I swear I've heard Millwall fans saying that sort of stuff. <laughs> He's also got experiences merely the name men give to their mistakes. Ooh, nice. so, Ooh. Much, so much gold. So he's on one side, and then on the other side, I've got St. Patrick. He's the reason we're all here. Uh, now, he did represent England at youth level. However, <laughs> he has chosen to represent Ireland. He converted Ireland to his, oh, to his religion. Ireland was not Christian before him. He converted an entire country. So he can convert a team to the tactics that I want to implement. Also, he banished all snakes. So you know... <laughs> that the dressing room is going to have no <laughs> negative characters in it. Right. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I was really took that very literally, and I thought, yeah, that is a problem in most dressing rooms is the snakes. I love it. I think yeah, you don't want to walk in there and find a cobra in the showers. I love it. Perfect. Okay. Amazing. Oh, any, any backstabbing, he's getting rid of it. Also, I know that he's obviously at the moment playing against mothers, but moving forward if the, as the league develops, if he ever comes up against the reptiles team, they are going to have a nightmare because like, there's like three snakes on that team. I love it. Perfect yeah. decision. So is that your whole backstage stuff? Well, um, I've got the leprechaun kicking around for luck. Uh, sure. I've got Hans Sloan, uh, who was an entrepreneur. He invented hot chocolate. He's just <laughs> providing hot chocolate afterwards. <laughs> That's nice. I think my in-house commentary team, just for the Irish football team TV channel, Terry Wogan, Graham Norton, you know, good times. Um, I, ooh, also, it might be worth mentioning. So this is a home game I'm playing, but in the away, in the away games, um, I think I'm going to have good support. Ireland have the highest percentage of native-born people living outside of Ireland. 17% of all Irish people don't live in Ireland. <laughs> So I'm going to have a lot of support all over the world. Sounds beautiful. Uh, well, hey, you know, that sounds like a great team. Uh, you've got some backstage there. So remind us one more time of your Fantasy Five. So in goal, I have the Puka. Uh, a central defender, I've got Bala. <laughs> in the midfield, I've got a rotating option. But I think today I'm going to start with Gronier, O'Malley and Liam Neeson. And my striker now is the headless horseman, the Dullahan. Very nice choices. Coming up, we've got Tom with his yummy mummies. <laughs> A podcast from producerpaul.co.uk. Tom, what's your team? My team is mothers, and I can't wait to tell you about it. My first pick, a mother of two. Globally revered as the mother of modern physics, my striker is Marie Curie. She's up front, and there's a hundred reasons why. Let me tell you a few. She is, of course, uh, the scientist who conducted pioneering research into radioactivity... And trust me, when she's in the box, there's going to be a lot right. of activity. She discovered two radioactive elements, polonium and radium, and she documented the penetrating power of the rays they emitted, almost as penetrating as her incredible finishing. <laughs> I can tell you're thrilled by this pick so far. She also, she, you know, she's, she's not all about just, like, getting it, penetrating. She doesn't want to scramble either. She doesn't mind it being messy. She's used to making the best out of a scruffy situation. The laboratory where she conducted all of this incredible research was pretty much just a leaky <laughs> shed that they used to store paints <laughs> oh, in. Wow. Like, she can get it done no matter the conditions. Sorry, Tom, are you pitching that as a strength? This is terrible news for somebody who handles radioactive material. These days they'd be jailed. I I'm not sure that this is a strength, is it? It absolutely is a strength because she <laughs> made do with, despite the conditions, she got incredible work done, work that changed the world... So she can easily change the course of a football match. And also, if you're worried about health and safety, Marie Curie literally would walk around with a, like a fistful of radium <laughs> all the time. Well, it wasn't affected uh, by She it. actually, uh, uh, it was reported that her hands were horribly scarred because she just was just walking around with radium all really the time. Really affected by she it. She didn't go, oh, I reckon that my hands might be looking like bits of bags of mint because of the, the radioactive... Yeah. She did. She figured it out because she's real smart. And um, but she just carried on doing it. Yeah, she used to. She used to carry um, <laughs> bits of uh, radioactive material literally in her coat pocket so she could get out and show people that it glowed. <laughs> That's ridiculous. She was daring. She was brave. Right. On the radioactive stuff, there is one potential positivity of the radioactive stuff, which is that, um, listen, we've seen in the Marvel Universe how well that can go. Hulk, Spider-Man, bitten by a radioactive spider. Mm. So basically yes. what I'm saying is, does Marie Curie have superpowers other than just being a great mum and 
very intelligent. Just being a great mum, Robin. Unbelievable. Great mum, great scientist. Hulk <laughs> level skill. She also, she'll make a blazing run into the box. Just like the trail she blazed through the male-dominated academic society of her time. That was good. As she became the first female professor of the University of Paris yeah, in 1906. Nice, yeah. She gets stuck in when she needed the most, right? During the First World War, she designed miniature x-ray machines that she supplied to the field hospitals uh, of France and a fleet of ambulances, one of which she drove and operated herself. She got out there, got to the front line and did the hard work. Presumably as well, because of how much radioactive isotope left in her hands. She didn't need petrol. She just sort of put her hands on the on the engine there and... <laughs> straight off. As I understand it, that is how petrol cars work. You can just power them by being nuclear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a great one. To- uh, I'm just checking that you are impressed by that look because she was driving to the front lines, not just because she could drive. <laughs> No, she got to the front lines and she was willing to to be there as a front line, you know, nursing carer. She got stuck in when she should, you know, you could argue that she could have protected herself with her vast wealth that she amassed. But she didn't. She volunteered to get involved. She gets stuck in is what I'm saying. Yeah, she sounds amazing, to be fair. That's a really good selection. Perhaps the, the biggest reason to pick Marie Curie is that she sets records... And she brings home the gold. Marie Curie was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. She was the first and only woman to win a Nobel Prize twice. And she is the only person to date to win the Nobel Prize in two different sciences. Physics and chemistry. She's good when things get physical. And she's got amazing chemistry with the rest of her team. Ah, so she's like the mother of science. She is referred to as the mother of modern physics, Matt. Wow. That's that's her moniker. And she was also a great mum. She was an inspiration to her two daughters, the oldest of which followed her mum into science. And then she won a Nobel Prize as well. Mm. What Mari puts out comes back with the gold. I was quite interested there, Tom, when you said she was the only woman to win two Nobel Prizes. So I just quickly Googled who else has won two Nobel Prizes. And there's only four people, full stop. There's only four people who've won two Nobel Prizes. And uh, out of that list of people, she is the only one I've heard of, making her the most famous Nobel Prize winner in history. Exactly, Robin. (laughs) She's got pedigree. She brings home awards for her work. Also, on her mothering, her other daughter married another Nobel Prize winner. That's four Nobel Prizes in the building at any given time when they have a family get-together. She makes winners. My striker, it's Marie Curie. It's beautiful. I think you get a million pounds when you win the Nobel Prize as well. So they're, they're just cashing it in, aren't they? God, I bet Christmas is amazing. I bet they have such great presents. <laughs> yeah. Like Marie Curie's just wrapping up a little box of palladium. Palladium? Yeah. <laughs> palladium? Yeah, that's what She's it is. She's not wrapping anything up with those hands, mate. <laughs> with her little stumpy fingers. She's wrapping up a little bit of radium. <laughs> She's giving it to her daughters. Oh, the, the radioactivity in that house is going to be astonishing. Right. Just behind Marie Curie, I started looking for some fictional mothers. You know, I wanted to mix it up a bit. Absolutely. I considered uh, Molly Weasley from Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. I considered Elastigirl from Pixar. But we've already had Harry Potter and Pixar teams. So I thought, you know, maybe leave them there. P.S. Both of these mums had sons on the starting lineups of those teams. But those guys make my bench. Sure. My pick for attacking midfielder is Morticia Adams. She's creepy, she's kooky, mysterious and spooky. She's altogether ooky. She's my attacking midfielder. What are her strengths? Right. She is the matriarch of the most loving family in television history. There is no family that is closer and stronger together than the Adams. And it is my opinion that it is her cool, calm, collected confidence that steers them through every storm. And it's a level head like that that's going to make her a chillingly efficient midfielder. She's, a, you know, she's sultry. She's smooth. She's silky on the ball. <laughs> a captivating player, right? She can literally bewitch any warm-blooded human being that gets anywhere near her. Also, a fantastic scene in Adam's Family Values. So sort of one of the more recent Adam Family uh, carnations where she dances with Gomez and Ma- carnations. Yeah, carnations, you have. Uh, she dances <laughs> carnations. she dances <laughs> carnations in carnation. You know what I meant. I got excited about about Morticia's dance move. She's got amazing footwork. That's what I'm saying. Go on. I'm trying to support you, but you can shove it up your ass. Morticia's gonna die. <laughs> she does have incredible footwork. Um and she loves carnations. It's not true actually. Uh she um 
She does. She does、uh, keep flowers, but one of her main hobbies is cutting the heads off roses and just keeping the thorny stalks. <laughs> yeah, she will be a thorn in the side of every defender in the league. There's the link. Okay, yeah. <laughs> right. Other things she enjoys. She does.、Uh, she does like to smoke occasionally. Not cigarettes. I mean, she literally just exudes smoke from beneath her dress. You know, she she's going to be hard to tackle. The ball and her lower half are completely clouded by a sexy goth smoke that's just <laughs> spreading from beneath her. Yeah, tackle that. Bet you.、Oh, it's like a sort of a, a gadget on a James Bond car. <laughs> yeah.、Um, she's also she's an amazing mum. You know, she to Wednesday and Pugsley and personal favourite Pubert.、Um, <laughs> She she gives them personal freedom to experiment, and she encourages creativity. You know, she makes the players on the pitch around her so much better. I would say that the one area of motherhood she has failed is in the naming of those kids. I mean, Pugsley's not doing well in year two, is he? Good lord! Yeah, but which kid's gonna dare bully Pugsley? You, you're you're gonna lose a finger. Yeah,、mate. that's true. That's true. Pubert. Pubert,、oh, I bully Pubert. I'm sorry to say it. I don't like. I don't like that about myself. But if a kid came to school with the first name Pubert. Come on, you're asking for it. Good luck, <laughs> Morticia Adams. She's been around forever.、Um, she first appeared in nineteen in the nineteen thirties, and she had a movie come out in like two thousand nineteen with another one planned. She just keeps going. And let's talk about quality. Morticia Adams has been portrayed over the years by two Oscar-winning actresses, an Oscar nominee, a two-time Tony winner, a two-time Golden Globe nominee, and. The winner of the environmental activism category at the 2006 Water Quality Awards. <laughs> She is quality. It's fantastic. I mean, a lot of those, you know, theatrical、uh, awards there. And hey, who is a better footballer than someone from the theatre background? Exactly, Matt. I'm talking about quality, not. Theatre.、Right. I'm talking about class.、Oh, yes. Don't do that to Matt. He, you just you just said a word that he could get involved with. He knew he knows the theatre words, and now you've <laughs> taken it away from him again. That was really mean. I'm talking about ability to bring home the gold. She is my attacking midfielder. Right. I'm jumping to the back of the pitch now. Back of the pitch, all the way. My goalkeeper is Mother Nature. Heard of her. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. The very embodiment of the natural world in all its forms, mother to all things, all people, and all stuff.、Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, Robbie Keane didn't have a hope in hell, so I'm really glad that the striker changed for Ireland there because Mother Nature, good. <laughs> Carry on, Tom. Yeah, if, if anyone's having a trouble、uh, getting a visual on Mother Nature in the film Epic, she is played by Beyonce. <laughs> so just、uh, picture Beyonce, but all planty, plant Beyonce. How many Nobel prizes has Beyonce got? A fifty-six. <laughs>、um, Mother Nature is in in the most literal sense a force of nature, the force of nature. There's an Irish strike. You got the, this headless horseman coming into the box. Oh, is that some grass growing up and snagging the feet of that little horse? Boom! Striker down. A shot comes in from range. A sudden wind blows the ball off course. Oh, goal kick to us. Tell you what. A dangerous-looking run down the wing. It'd be a shame if there was a sudden stampede of hippopotamus in the way. <laughs> Nature, Earth's protector, the protector of my goal. It's amazing.、It、sounds like a witch. An awesome Beyonce sexy plant. Nature witch is what she is, <laughs> right? Particular tactic against Ireland. Yeah, it, it. She can just make little shamrocks appear in the pitch, and I think that does technically mean any Irish person has to pick up and care for a shamrock forever.、Mm. So they will just, I assume, leave the pitch immediately. Yeah, that will stunt their team.、Uh, she's she's my goalkeeper. She's incredible. She's Beyonce plants. It's Mother Nature. <laughs> Beautiful. Who do you have up front? I've already told you my striker. <laughs> oh, <laughs> who do you have in the other positions on a football team? <laughs> I mean, he's right. It is up front from the goal. He's right. I, I'm standing with Matt on that one. It is up front. It is further up front than the goal is. Well done, Matt. That's true. In defence, who've you got? Thank you, Robin. In defence, <laughs> you hear a lot about single mums. My defender is a double mummy.、Ooh. She is the foremost of noble ladies, Pharaoh Hatshepsut of the 18th dynasty of Egypt. She's a mummy, mummy. <laughs> Is that why you picked her? <laughs> yes, that's why I picked her. This is a team of mothers, and she's a mummy, and she's also a mummy. That's double mummy, Matt. <laughs> that's maths, right? In 1478 BC, she became pharaoh of all Egypt and reigned for 22 years, and absolutely nailed it. 22 years is a long time to be pharaoh of Egypt in 1478 BC or thereabouts.、Uh, she was one of the most prolific builders 
of ancient uh, Egypt, commissioning hundreds of projects up and down the Nile. So you know against a set piece, she can make the perfect wall to defend <laughs> our goal. Uh, she also had great vision, great anticipation, as she was the first pharaoh of many who built in what would become the Valley of the Kings. The Valley of the Kings. And she picked out that area of land herself, citing it as a perfect place to expand the civilization. Foresight, anticipation. She's ready. I've been, I've been to the Valley of the Kings, and uh, I've actually seen uh, Hatshepsut's uh, mummy. It's no, it's no longer in the Valley of the Kings in Cairo now. But uh, let me tell you, she's well put together still. So whether she's, uh, it doesn't matter what form <laughs> you've got her in here. If you've got her as a 22 year old pharaoh, um, probably by that point, I would argue she'd be in worse state in 1478 BC than a mummy is now. You know, the healthcare <laughs> just wasn't up to scratch. So I think you might want to take the mummy, mummy, <laughs> rather than the non mummy, mummy. Yeah. Because also, if things get a bit, if things go wrong, she can give you a curse because she's a spooky mummy now. <laughs> uh, Robert, because you know this mummy, well, I'm thinking that people in Egypt are a bit smaller than they are nowadays. Was she quite a small mummy? Um, not noticeably. It's kind of hard to tell when they're lying down in a box. Um, but uh, she... you can you can tell how tall someone is by lying down. Well, I was a child, so everybody looked big. Um, okay. She was. She was. Also, you shrink, don't you? When you get mummified, you shrink because all the moisture leaves your body. Yeah, yeah. So, um, in terms of sort of height, Tom, depending on whether you take living. Hatshepsut or, or reanimated. I guess Morticia could reanimate the mummy. Uh, so it's it's up to you. Exactly. You can have either of those. It's good. I don't mind her being small. Low centre of gravity, you know. I was just really just trying to search for a throwaway comment where I could call her a mini mummy mummy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But this just went on a lot longer than I was hoping for. Sorry. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if she was small, but apparently she just could have been average height. Are you saying that Robin went on for too long about something? That's interesting. <laughs> mean. Look, also, playing the ball out of defence... She can think forward as well. She's she's not she's not stuck to to, to the to the one task. Uh, she established a vast network of trade routes that vastly improved the wealth of her great nation. Yeah, she's looking forward. She's picking out passes. She can see where things are headed. Okay, she's this is just a fun side fact. She is responsible for the first ever recorded trade of live trees. It's <laughs> huge. There you go. This is a fun fact for everyone. Yeah, they were myrrh trees from the land of Punt. <laughs> Um, right. She was the greatest self-promoter among pharaohs, historians agree. And I like this because I feel like the fans will get behind her level of arrogance. She put her name on everything. She just, she had her builders just write it bloody everywhere. And she actually renamed herself to make it more awesome. Truth, the soul of the sun god. <laughs> that is the sort of confidence that people are drawn to. It's sort of like the original Donald Trump, isn't it? Just putting your name wherever you want. <laughs> exactly. She she has confidence. I really like it. If she could also then marry someone whose surname was was here, then that would be even better when she writes it everywhere. <laughs> Um, she is my defender. It's Hapshet suit. Beautiful. Now, if I was to take a guess at other positions on a football pitch, I would fail. So you tell me, what do you have? <laughs> my final player. My captain. My central midfielder. The linchpin of my team is my mum. <laughs> because she's the best. <laughs> Go on, hear him out. <laughs> Tom's, you're having, Tom, you're having Tom's mum. Yep, my mum. Right. There's a lot to yep. talk about here. What's... No, there's nothing to talk about. I've already, I've said everything that needs to be said. <laughs> it, I'll just, I'll repeat in case it wasn't entirely clear. I'm having my mum because she is the best. <laughs> just going just gonna to write those notes down. <laughs> <laughs> there was no way I was putting a team of mothers together and not having my mum because she's the best mum. Are you concerned that because you keep forgetting uh, every Mother's Day to send a card that you can now get her to listen to the podcast <laughs> and go, look, I love your mummy. There's no way she'll listen to this. <laughs> no. Fine, fine. Y your mum's the best. All right. Like, let's first of all, just for a second, pretend that we all agree with that. Uh, and next agree up I don't need agreement. It's an observable fact. She's the best. She's the best. So everyone else in your t your own team pales in comparison. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, interesting. Okay. She's the best. Oh, love is so much better than Mother Nature. Yeah. Um, if I had to pick between the two, I know which one I'd take. You'd use your mum over all of nature. Selfish. That's selfish. She's the best. If Tom won't discuss the skills, I'm I'm look, I'm on the opposite team, but I am happy to discuss her skills. That woman <laughs> is going to be putting on a bitchin' buffet after the <laughs> after the game. Oh, we're talking cheese spread. 
Mm. Yeah, so many West Country cheeses. She makes an incredible <laughs> brew. I'm I'm looking forward to the post match. Amazing homemade chutneys gives a heck of a <laughs> hug. Goes a bit longer than you think. Just the right amount for me. <laughs> She's generous, you know. She feeds people, feeds passes to the rest of the team. Look, of course there are reasons. There are loads of reasons why she's a great player, but they, none of them matter when you consider the observable truth that she's the best. Your mum's uh, your mum, much like Mary Curie, Marie Curie, she's a nurse, correct? Yeah, well, Marie Curie, uh, not technically a nurse, oh. but weirdly, my mum was a nurse for Marie Curie. Right, so Marie Curie, uh, the Marie Curie Foundation for ten years. That's synergy. That's bloody synergy right there. Uh, yeah, she's a nurse. I mean, I-, I was happy just leaving it. She's the best. But here we go, <laughs> right? My mum is a palliative care nurse. Which is amazing. So she looks after people like end-of-life care, which uh, is considered by a lot of people to be just the toughest job in medicine. I asked her once uh, why, as as like a teenager, I was like, why would you do this? And she said, um, she said, uh, I know that most people just can't do the work, but I can. So I know that I have to. Wow, that really sounds like a Liam Neeson line. Yeah, that is honestly amazing that your mum said that. And I think, obviously, mad respect to palliative care nurse. I couldn't do it. It's an incredibly difficult job. But, (laughs) and sorry to be that guy, but it's not hugely relevant for a football team, is it? I mean, listen. What, that resilience, that power, that self-awareness? Well, it's useful if somebody on your team dies, which which there is chance of happening with with the headless horseman. But, but, you know, ah, I mean, sure, she's really caring, but... What's she going to do if someone's got a stubbed toe? They're not dying. Is she just going to assume that they're dying and then be like, there, there, lie down, rest, rest now? Is that what's going to happen? Robin, you, you know, if you're trained to be a nurse, right, you don't go straight into a special. She was a, just an ER nurse for a really long time. Yeah, but remember your GCSE maths? No, me neither, because it was so long ago <laughs> that you don't use those skills anymore. So, all right, she's got Robin, a good job, and I'm very, very oh, impressed by her. <laughs> and I, honestly, we need more of people yeah, like your, that. Your dissing of palliative care nurses aside... <laughs> She's the best. Uh, I just want to highlight that Robin hates mothers and nurses. That's what we're doing today. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Yep, yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, the rest of us <laughs> love those things, so uh, please don't uh, leave our podcast, but do hate Robin. <laughs> it's just not relevant. It's just not relevant that she's a palliative care nurse. You yeah. bought it up! Uh, yeah, I thought you were going to go for the nursing side. I thought you were going to go, oh yeah, she's good at stitching up a wound. She, oh, she's really good if you've stubbed your toe. But no, I hope no one's going to die on this. What are you talking about? She's what the best, Robin. About? Is she? She's well, the best. Find out. We're about to find out, Tom. She's the best. <laughs> well, Tom, is that your full team? Do you have any of the backstage stuff? <laughs> yeah, look, I've got to talk about the bench. Obviously, Elastigirl, Molly Weasley. Uh, Can we just pause on, there Robin. for one second? Going back to Matt discussing theatre, he has just referred to the back room staff as the backstage oh. staff. And I loved <laughs> it. I loved it. I just wanted to I just wanted to say I like that Matt's bringing theatre into everything we do. It's Thanks, mate. I generally thought I said, OK, I was close. I was really close. <laughs> You're very close, mate. Very close. Right. <laughs> let's finish this up. My bench, we've already discussed Elastigirl from The Incredibles, Molly Weasley. They're there. But for everything else we need, if anything happens to one of our players on the bench, I have necessity. <laughs> necessity. The mother That's of invention, it, the mother guys. Of invention. It is. Necessity <laughs> is the mother of invention. A very creative player that fits any role perfectly. Necessity on the bench. I've got a physio, in case anyone goes down. My mum's busy, despite Robin's claims that she's not a proper nurse. <laughs> I have got Mother Teresa on the bench to, to run on with the stretcher if needed. Uh, one of the big things I want to talk about, uh, as we've pointed out already, people love Mothers, yeah? The fans are super behind this team. They've got some amazing chants, yeah? How about this one? Uh, Were you born in a barn? Shut the door! It's a good one. They love that one. <laughs> it's pretty good, yeah. Or they, they, they enjoy this one. Don't put your coat on inside, you won't feel the benefit. <laughs> uh, or the one that everyone can get behind is the classic mum chant, which is, If your friend Paul jumped off a cliff, would you copy that as well? Mother's FC! <laughs> it's beautiful, man. I can hear it already. I'm done. Well, there we have it. That was Tom's team. Good old mummy's boy. It's a fine team. Could you remind us who you have, Tom? I sure can. In goal, it's Mother Nature. In defence, it's Hat Shep Suit. Uh, in the midfield, I've got my mum and Morticia Adams. And up front, it is Marie Curie. Thank you very much, Mummy's Boy. That is Team Mothers. Well, we have the teams. Now it's time to see how the managers feel. Sam, you're up first. Uh, it's actually a home team for you today. So where are you playing and how are you feeling? Uh, I am playing on the Cliffs of Moher, uh, the beautiful 
cliffs in the west of Ireland. It's such a wonderful scene to play a game of football. Gorgeous. It's probably going to be raining. It's Ireland. Um, how am I feeling? I'm, I, I, listen, I'm powerfully confident. Um, Tom, my op- opposition manager, talks about how there's a, there's a big fan base. Listen, this is a game of football. It's built by the patriarchy for the patriarchy. I'm not worried about an old, gnarled-handed woman with radiation poisoning <laughs> who can drive a car. Great. Um, also, Mother Nature, not worried about her. Bala's entire purpose is to destroy nature. That's literally why he is alive. Um, a pharaoh who can build obelisks and walls. Yeah, okay, she did that herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think in general, it's you know, it's a, it's a team of mothers. Whenever I come in the box, they're going to be out for nine months. I'm, I'm, I'm confident. Wow. Fantastic words there from Sam, who may have lost half of the demographic of people <laughs> listening to our show. Tom. What do you think your chances are? Against this foul misogynist, I feel pretty good, right? Listen, people, everyone loves at least one mum, which means everyone is going to be supporting my team. The only people that are going to support Ireland over mothers are some very, very passionate Irish people. Look, the fans are on my side. Also... Like, Bala's only job may be to destroy nature, but he hasn't done it, has he? He's failed. He's failed at his job. He sounds like a big, lumbering idiot with cystitis of the face. I am not concerned about this team at all. Mothers, we are here. We are ready. We will win. Well, we're in for a big one here. There's only one thing left to do. It's time for kickoff. Welcome to the Cliffs of Moa Stadium. It's a rainy day here in Ireland. Well, because of course it is. Hapchet Suit has just hopped off the team bus and isn't happy with the name of the stadium. A hundred Egyptian peasants have arrived and are crossing out the word Moa and have replaced that with Truth, the Soul of the Sun God. So I guess it's now welcome to Truth, the Soul of the Sun God Stadium. The mother's team warming up now by handing out orange slices to each other while catching up on what happened on the latest steamy episode of Poldark. Balor just huddling with teammates O'Malley and Neeson, but it seems the fact that he is a fiery personification of the sun is not mixing well with his teammates' pasty Irish complexions. They are not used to this Factor 50 kind of action and are asking him to kindly get lost. And there's the kickoff. Dallahan's horse has stopped directly in front of Hatshep's suit and is waiting for the inevitable death. Concerned from Tom's mum as she rushes over to provide care for the soon-to-die mummy... But no need. Hatshep suit is, of course, a mummy mummy and has already passed over. So play continues. The Delahan ordering his mount to stop horsing about and get on with the game. Gronio O'Malley passing back to Bala and... Oh! Oh, Marie Curie is there right away with a savage tackle on Balor. Puka does not like that and has shapeshifted into a stuck-up middle finger at Curie. Marie Curie may have discovered radium, but can she discover the manners to apologise? Morticia Adams and Tom's mum with some nice link-up play. Uh, in comes Liam Neeson. A tenacious tackle. He's taken it from Adams. He attempts a long pass, but it goes out of play. He looks in some pain as he's complaining about his lower leg bone. Mmm, he's whipped out a bit of paper. Oh, I see. He's looking for a replacement on his shin dealer's list. Wow. Tom's mum with the throw-in. Wordy, wordy, Shut that door! Grania O'Malley with a deadly interception. She's got a baby latched to her left teat. She only gave birth three minutes before kickoff. What a woman. Tom's mum pausing before she takes the corner and displaying her best mum Mother's Day card to the bench. Cast iron proof that she is the world's best mum for a card budget of £1.70 to £2.90. Oh no. Oh, we've got a pitch invader. It's Robin's mum and she has a card claiming that she is the best mum. Oh, interesting. This is going to have to go to VAR. Yes, the inside of this card, Tom has written to the best mum in the world, whereas Robin has written, have a really wonderful day. Cast iron proof there that she is, in fact, the world's best mum. Booker taking the form of a King Cobra here to rise up and neatly head the ball clear, and it's gone behind for a corner. St. Patrick has just emerged from the tunnel with a pie, and oh no, he's banishing the Booker from the goal! Puka has retreated to the stands and has turned back into his traditional malevolent horse shape. But in the confusion, Mari Curie has an open goal. She slots home a beautiful laser-like strike into the top left corner. 1-0 to Mothers. Mari Curie's finger has fallen to the floor, a result of all the radioactive material in her front pocket. 
Tom's mum is rushing over to see if she can help, but unfortunately, Marie Curie is not dying. Ah, unfortunately, Tom's mum is not at all helpful in this situation. She has offered a very well brewed tea and a chocolate hobnob, though. She is the best. There's the halftime whistle. Well, this is nice. Halftime entertainment being provided by two members of the band Bewitched, both Irish and mothers. Lovely stuff. The second half is underway, and it's still a single goal that separates the teams. Morticia Adams coming on for a second half, and she's looking even more morose than usual. Yes, the team coach has reported that she found Cousin It in the showers, blocking up the plug hole. Oh no. Well, we wish Cousin It the best for a speedy recovery. Liam Neeson loops across over towards the Delahan, who throws his head up into the air and connects with a beautiful header. Both the ball and his head are flying towards the goal. It's no problem for Mother Nature, who has summoned a flock of geese to block both the ball and the severed head. Conor McGregor is on to replace Gronya O'Malley, who has apparently had to leave early to parlay with Queen Elizabeth I. And McGregor is straight on the ball, up the wing, bang! Oh, a beautiful goal for Conor, and he's only been on the pitch for mere seconds! Replicating his win at UFC 205, 13 seconds from entrance to banging one away. Dolahan passes back to Balor. Balor is under incredible pressure from Tom's mum. Balor is looking around for an open pass. He glances back to his own goal. There's Puka, currently in the form of an ill-tempered goat. Balor's taken too long here, and the might of his destructive laser eye has torched the fur off Puka, leaving nothing but a burnt hairless animal that smells of delicious goat rotty. Oh, that scorched corpse will go well with a lovely doll. Mm. Morticia Adams has disappeared into a cloud of smoke as she runs up the pitch, but, oh dear me, oh, there is a breakdown in communication. Mother Nature sends a stiff gust of wind, presumably to blow her towards the goal, but the smoke has just all blown right into the path of Marie Curie. Who has collapsed to a coughing fit. Her lungs are not healthy after all the radium. And that attack is halted, the ball cleared by Conor McGregor. Liam Neeson with a through ball to Conor McGregor, who is not paying attention at all. No, he's looking at his watch with a curious smile on his face. And he's leaving the pitch for some alone time and a cold shower. We'll see him again in a few minutes, no doubt. He's used to knocking one out, so it won't take long. Nice bit of skill from Tom's mum there. She takes an athletic twist past Liam Neeson. His skill is just nothing compared to the grace and athleticism of Tom's mum. Certainly what Tom's dad says. Mother Nature calling Dullahan's name. And Dullahan has wet himself all over the pitch. Well, when nature calls. Tom's mum is loving the game and is certainly grateful for her second favourite son putting her on his team. That's the final whistle as we finish one all to Ireland and indeed the mothers because that's how a draw works. The real winner today is equality. Well, again, now time to get the reactions from the managers. Sam, you drew. Yes, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a little disappointed, but I think on reflection, it's probably um, it's probably a fair result. <laughs> fair enough, Tom. You also drew. How do you feel? Uh, a little disappointed. I think we deserved more. I can't understand how the best player didn't score 40 to 50 goals. She's the best. <laughs> um, but hey... You know, equality wins here, and that's that's a good thing. Now, we're going to have a quick look at the run-ups on the leaderboard. Currently, top of the leaderboard is Tom with seven points. We have Sam with four, and Matt and Robin with a gentleman's three each. Do let us know what you thought of today's teams and our results on social media. We're at Noise Next Door on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and we'd love to hear from you. We've had some lovely comments already. We've got some five-star little reviews there from uh, Mrs. Robster Bobster. She says, excellent fun. Fairy Fluff oh, says, such a clever idea works so well clever. so thank you you guys it is clever we are brilliant and uh, we appreciate that you guys are listening in <laughs> yeah but we are also very needy and want more reviews so do get on that thanks very We're much so clever who can forget the poo car <laughs> so do hey send us all your five star reviews on the preferred podcast providers and we will be eternally grateful hey if you've already done one once send it again they don't mind doubles <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Next week on Fancy Five, we have another special episode. As the Six Nations comes to a close, we are doing a special Rugby Sevens team from the world of Looney Tunes and Cartoon Network. I cannot wait. Well, we'll see you then. Now it's time to hit the showers. Connor, good game out there today. You have learned much from me, young Paddy Wan. I am grateful for your teachings, my master. It's good to be away from that mother's team at last. Mm, this mummy hasn't gone, boys. Tom's, Tom's mum? 